Hello Year 10. Today we are going to be looking at how we can solve simultaneous equations. Um, this time not by drawing out the graphs, but this time just using some algebra. Um, so if you've done some uh, lessons from this week, you'll have had some practice at solving um, linear simultaneous equations. And then last lesson, uh, you should have been looking at plotting a quadratic graph and a linear graph and finding um, where those points intersect for the solution. Now, I, I'm going to make the assumption that you've printed out one of these sheets so you can follow along. If you can't print out one of these sheets, then I would suggest you just copy this as examples into your book. So, our objective for today is solve simultaneous equations for a linear and a quadratic by equating them. And I'll explain what that means in a moment. Um, and I've also gone on to just quickly explain um, two different scenarios that can happen. Technically, there are three scenarios, but two different scenarios that can happen with a quadratic graph and a linear graph. So, for example, if you think about it, we know a quadratic graph is a U-shape. So maybe something that looks like that. And when you have a linear graph that intersects it, what you'll have found, and this happened last lesson, is that happens in two places. And you end up getting two sets of solutions for the intersection of a quadratic graph and a linear graph. Now, that isn't the only scenario that can happen. You can actually get a very, very special case where you have a quadratic graph and your linear function just touches that curve at one point. Now, some of you will recall what one of these lines is called when it just touches the curve. That is called a tangent. So in that case, you would actually only get one solution to when you solved your quadratic and your linear graph. I did say there was a third solution, but this wouldn't actually happen if you were being asked to solve simultaneous equations because you could have a U-shaped graph and a line and it doesn't cross at all and then there would be no solutions whatsoever. And there wouldn't be much point trying to solve some equations that didn't actually have any answers. So that doesn't tend to happen ever. Okay, I'm just going to put a little note here. Note that for one solution... The line is a tangent to the curve. So the main purpose of today is trying to move away from drawing graphs. Two reasons. It's very, very unlikely they would ask you to do something like this using graphs could be that they ask you to plot a quadratic graph. They could be ask you to draw another line and find some solutions. But it's more and more likely that they will ask you to solve um, a linear and a quadratic equation um, simultaneously using algebra. If you are incredibly lucky, you could end up with simultaneous equations like you were doing from two lessons ago. The sort that we taught, um, uh, the sort that we met in year nine. And if you end up with a question like that in your exam, um, you should just be really, really happy. Um, but more likely, you'll end up with a more complicated question towards the end of your exam, like what we're going to be doing today. So we are going to solve simultaneous equations um, today by equating them. And what that means is it means you find two things that are equal. So, for example, let's look at my first one and we will see what is equal in these equations. So you could think of these as um, graphical functions because I've written them both as y equals. So I've got my linear function here. It says solve y equals 3x take 9. That's my straight line. And y equals x squared take away x take away 5. That is my quadratic simultaneously. Now, this works because these expressions are both y equals. And I've said, since both of these expressions equal y, 
what can we say about each of them? Well, if this equals y and this equals y, then both of those algebraic expressions must be equal to each other. If that's y, then that's y. Well, these two things that I've highlighted in blue must also be equal. So I'm going to write that out. So I'm going to say this one, x squared, take away x, minus 5, must equal 3x, take away 9. And that's what that expression equating them means. I have put these two things equal to each other. So I'm just going to put here, since both of these equal y, what can we say about them? They are the same. They are equal to each other. Now, what we've got here is now an equation just in one variable. Well, what type of equation is it? Well, it is a quadratic equation. And I can see it's a quadratic equation because the biggest power I've got is a squared. So, how am I going to solve this quadratic equation? Well, just like any quadratic equation, we need to make it equal zero. I'm going to make this side equal zero. And I can make this side equal zero by doing the inverse of 3x, subtracting 3x, and doing the inverse of take away 9, which is add 9. So, I'll do that in two steps. You might be happy doing it all in one go. I'm going to take away 3x's, so take, take off 3x's from both sides, the x squared stay the same. I've got negative x, take off 3x's, and that is negative 4x, and the negative 5 stays the same. I've subtracted 3x's from here, so that's now gone, and I'm left with negative 9. Now to make that side equal zero, um, I'm now going to plus nine to both sides. And when I plus nine to both sides, let's just check this, I get x squared, take away four x, adding nine there will give me plus four equals zero. And there is the quadratic equation that I can now solve and work out the values of x. So, we should know how to solve quadratic equation. We've got different methods, but the first method that we should always check is, does this one factorise? And it does factorise. I can see that I can do an x take away 2, x take away 2 equals 0. So... One of these brackets has to equal zero. Both of these brackets are actually the same. So we know, so x take away two must equal naught. Therefore, x has to equal two. So this is gonna be one of these examples where we just end up with one solution. This is gonna end up being a tangent to that curve okay if there was two solutions i would end up with two different brackets here now that i know x is two i need to work out the corresponding y um, number um, in other words what the coordinate would be sometimes a question might ask you to write coordinates sometimes it might just ask you to write x and y down so i'm going to do a little bit like what we're doing normal simultaneous equations a substitution and obviously I'm going to substitute into the linear expression because it is easier to work out what y is so I'm going to do when x equals 2 and I'm going to substitute into there so I know that y is 3 lots of my x so 3 times 2 take away 9 so, 3 times 2 is 6, take away 9 is negative 3. 
So I've got the one solution when x is 2, y is negative 3. Now, there is a way of checking in these ones. Since I substituted into this first one, could even call that equation 1 if I wanted to, and I could say that this was a substitution in 1, I can do a little check in 2. So, I've got that when x is 2, y should be negative 3. So let's see if that's right. Negative 3 for the y equals 2 squared, take away 2, take away 5. Let's see if this is right. 2 squared is 4, take away 2, take away 5 is 4, take away 2, 2, take away 5, minus 3. Minus 3 equals minus 3. So it has worked. So my answer for this one is x is 2 and y is minus 3. So this box is just to say this is an example of a tangent to a curve. And I know that that happened because I only ended up with one solution. I got what's called a repeated root. OK, so that's the first example. Let's look at the second example. And this is set up in exactly the same way. And the questions that you do for me later are all going to be of this type where you can equate your two equations. So you can see we've got solve y equals 8 take away x and y equals x squared take 4x take 2 simultaneously. Now you could pause the video here if you want and have a go at this one yourself. If you're not feeling that confident then by all means um, just follow along with me. So what I'm going to do is yes I'll call this one 1, I'll call this one 2. I'm first of all going to equate those two expressions. I'm going to start writing number 2 first because it's got the positive number of x squared and that will put, like I did in the first one, my, my x squared in the right place in terms of how I like my quadratics to look. So I've got x squared, take away 4x, take away 2 equals 8, take away x. So that is just that equals that because they were both y okay if you don't mind i'm going to do it all in one step this time i need to make this side zero i need to do the inverse i'm going to add an x and i'm going to subtract an eight and if i add an x the x squared will stay the same but if i add an x i'll have negative three x and if I'm subtracting 8, this is going to become negative 10. Okay, now once again, it's a quadratic equation. It factorises. I think in my time doing um, GCSE exams, I've only ever seen one of these where you've had to use the quadratic formula as well. That would be just too much complication for one question. So always make the assumption that it's going to factorise. Okay, this time I'm looking for numbers that multiply to make 10. Since it's 1x squared, I can put my x in straight away. And the only numbers that multiply to make 10, we could list them, um, are 1 and 10 and 5 and 2. It's going to be 5 and it's going to be 2. This negative tells me the signs are different. I'm trying to make negative 3. So it is negative 5 plus 2. So this time these two brackets are different. So that is going to give me two different answers. So let's show you how you deal with this. So just like as you would be solving any quadratic, either x take away 5 equals 0. That gives me the answer x is 5. Oops. 
don't know why I put O there. Let's scribble that out. O, X plus 2 equals naught. And that gives me an answer. X equals negative 2. So what I have to do differently this time is I need to work out the Y value when X is 5 and check it. And then I need to do it again for the second value. It's probably just about enough space here. So again, I'm going to substitute into the linear one because it's a lot easier to substitute in there. So when X equals 5... y is 8 take away x so 8 take away 5 is 3 so y equals 3 i'm gonna do the check mentally i'm more than happy for you to do your check mentally as long as there is some sort of check going on because again once you've cracked one of these questions you will know whether it's right or wrong so i'm just going to do my mental check Let's put 5 in. 5 squared, 25. Take away 4 x's, so take away 4 5's. 4 5's is 20. So we've got 25. Take away 20 is 5. Take away 2 is 3. It equals 3. There we go, it's working in both of them. And when x equals negative 2. Again, I'm going to substitute it into the linear one, number one. Just be, again, a little bit careful because of this negative. So I'm working out why. I've got to do 8 take away negative 2. So that's subtracting a negative equivalent to adding 8 plus 2 is 10. So that gives me y is 10. Okay, I'll just mentally check that in here. Again, I'm going to have to be careful with the signs. Negative 2 squared. A negative number squared is positive. So negative 2 squared is 4. I think I'll just do this one with a bit of working out. I'm now subtracting 4 x's. So I'm subtracting 4 lots of negative 2. And 4 lots of negative 2 is negative 8. So subtracting 4 lots of negative 2 is going to be like adding 8. And then I'm taking away 2. 4 add 8, take away 2 is 10. So it has worked in that case. Okay, so that's our video to accompany this lesson. Uh, there's going to be some questions, so do go back to the instructions that are on your um, sheet for this week. Um, best of luck with the questions. Um, I'll, if you need to get in touch, uh, feel free. But that's me signing out for the time being. Take care and goodbye.